What I'm going to do, I'm going to jump into Gorilla Creativity. I'd like my friends and helpers, the people actually running the show, doing all the hard work, to pass out the 10 things to know about Gorilla Creativity. And I'm going to walk you through this. This is your worksheet to take down those notes. How many of you have your books? Your Gorilla books? Are they open? Who has a pen? Okay? Always have a pen. Always have a pen. So we're going to take some notes all about Gorilla Creativity, and then we're going to talk about the, um, the way to kind of put that into a little bit of action, and then I'm going to bring Charles up and just get us kicked off here. So as they're passing these out, I'll go ahead and get started. So the Gorilla Creativity, there's 10 things that you really need to know about this creativity. One is that it always begins with an idea. And it seems like a simple statement, but there's really some profound truth to this idea that you need to be committed to creating and coming up with ideas and going places and consuming information to put more ideas into your mind so that they're stored away and you can access them at any time. Does that make sense? So here's the thing. You need to be a lifelong learner. You need to always be looking for ideas. And oftentimes those ideas have nothing to do with your business. And much like I said yesterday, you're going to hear some presentations that are completely on point and ring a bell in your mind so hard, you're like, ooh, that's massive. That's going to change things. I'm going to write this down. And then you have to take what? Some action. Yes? And then you're going to be sitting through a presentation. You're going to be like, I don't do that kind of marketing. That doesn't apply to my business. Guess what? The concepts behind it apply to every business right? The tool may change. In Gorilla, we have over 200 Gorilla weapons that are low, no cost, and highly effective. Some of them as expensive as TV advertising, right? Which we all know can uh, be very, very expensive, running infomercials and things like that. But all these weapons work when used in the right plan, following the right strategy. And so part of what we spend a lot of our time teaching people is, what's the right strategy? And then with that strategy, which tactics are going to help you accomplish that strategy? And in order to do those tactics, you have to select the weapons. That's one of the reasons why we curate and maintain that list and we update it from time to time. How many of us are actively at this moment waiting to send out a blast fax? I knew it was you. <laughs> There's always one. <laughs> what about MySpace? How many of us are using MySpace actively to market our business? Nobody? No? Okay. How many are using email marketing? Most of us, yes. So you understand that the tools change over time. And what works today may not work in the future. And so one of the things that we walk you through with Gorilla is we're creating your plan. And so I'm kind of teeing up what I'm going to talk about later today is creating your Gorilla marketing plan. And once you have your marketing plan, then you can create an advertising plan. There is a difference between marketing and advertising. Advertising is part of marketing. PR is part of marketing. Propaganda is part of marketing. Yes? Right, Kurt? That's right. <laughs> so... You always need to be looking for ideas. So you're going to hear some ideas today, and you're going to be like, those are the best thing I've ever heard. I'm going to write them down in my little black book that Jason gave me, right? And then these other ones, you're going to be like, I don't know how this applies, but I'm still going to write it down. Because when you go back through, you're going to make new connection points. And so those ideas are very, very powerful. And so that's why we want you to be focused on that. So the next thing is, is, is where to find these ideas. And I've talked a little bit about everywhere. Everywhere you need to find ideas. But once you have that idea, it will write its own advertising and marketing. Emerson and I are going to sit down and we're going to have a fireside chat. And what we're going to do is I'm going to try to market some products. And what is Emerson? The commander of copy? Right? <laughs> the ambassador of advertising? What was it? Cop the captain of copy. Commander of conversion, yes. Admiral, see, of Admiral of advertising. So see, you guys remember this, right? Because it's a story. And he has the meme, which is the hat. And we talked about unique positioning. And so once you understand that you have an idea, the question is, is how do you weave all of that through your marketing and your advertising? We see a lot of people doing a lot of shotgun strategies. They get off track. They, they try this and they try that. And they get so far off track, they're not sure what's working and what's not working. And one thing, and this is a writer downer, so get, grab your pen. 
you need to know what to do more of, less of, and none of. Does that make sense? So if you're not tracking everything you do in marketing, you're literally guessing. And Rook talked yesterday about how you need to spend a certain amount of your time on the stuff that you know works, and you need to spend a smaller amount of time testing ideas, because you can attest yourself into, like, confusion and test yourself into a lack of results. So the next thing is, is that creativity doesn't care where it comes from. So changing your state, changing your environment, having conversations with people that you don't like. Anybody have any of those? Yes? Ever get stuck in an elevator and you're like, I don't want to be here with these people? Especially their elevator pitch, right? But it doesn't matter where it comes from. Creativity can come from anywhere. You have to be receptive. Does that make sense? How many ears? Two? How many mouths? One? Listen. Be receptive to ideas, yes? Good. All right, so the best creativity spawns ideas with very long lives. How many of you were here yesterday when Jeannie stood up and talked about some of the history of Jay and the big advertising, right? Jolly Green Giant, Star Kid, Charlie the Tuna, right? The Sears Die Hard Battery, the Friendly Skies, Good Hands of Allstate, uh, Michelin Man, all these different things. Those are ideas with very long lives. You need very long lives ideas in your business as well. They have to live on, and that's how you get momentum. I was talking to somebody who's in this room who has been very, very successful in their life. They are an icon in the marketing realm, and they were sharing with me how they went on their entrepreneurial journey. They're still on it, right? And things happen, and you zig and you zag, and you have ups and downs, but sometimes you find yourself a little behind, and it can take time to get momentum back but you have to be focused. You have to be pedaling and swimming for the finish line at all times. Uh, as a pilot, did anybody a pilot in here? A couple of us, a few of us? You know the thing is, if you're at a cocktail party, do you know how you find out if there's a pilot? They'll tell you. <laughs> as I just did, right? <laughs> so, yeah, um, there aren't a lot of us, and. Unfortunately, it's fewer and fewer over time. In fact, if any of you fly commercially, it's going to become a real problem. So if you know anybody that wants to learn to fly, I highly encourage them to do it. And don't dabble with it. Just, like, get it done, right? Really focus. Take serious action. And it's a lot of fun, personally. And if they want it as a job, that's great. Um, so the next thing is, advertising and marketing is a truth made fascinating. So, so Jay put this in one of the books. And think about this for a moment. Fascinating. The truth made fascinating. How do you fascinate those people that you want to consider what it is you have to offer? Whether it's your help, your product, your service. How do you make it so fascinating that they are intrigued? How do you make it so fascinating that you magnetize yourself to them so that they want to do business with you? So they're clamoring to do business with you. Maybe you use propaganda. You, you, you'll hear a recurring theme as I go today about that, right? Because you magnetize yourself via story. You magnetize yourself via creating something people want to be associated with, something that intrigues them, they want to learn more, right? And you're not pushing, you're pulling. There's a difference between push marketing and pull marketing. And so if you make it fascinating, you make your job much, much easier. And the thing about creativity is that People say, oh, I just want to, I, I need to get inspired to come up with an idea. You don't need to be inspired. You actually need to put in the work. You might have lightning strike, and that's great. You might have an epiphany. Anybody ever do some of their best thinking in the shower? Do you know why that is? I'm not a brain scientist, but there's something about the brain waves when you're being pelted with water. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Yes? So you know I'm saying the truth. I just don't know the, I don't want to misquote which wave it is. The shower works for a lot of people. You need to find your shower. Does that make sense? The ideas will come to you. The synapses will fire. The connection points will be made. And you will come up with these epiphanies that will revolutionize your business. But they have to be on your strategy. They cannot take you down a shiny brick road to the shiny object of confusion. Does that make sense? Confusion leads to inaction. Right? So we must be very careful about that. Creativity does not come from perspiration. You cannot work hard to be creative. You need to relax into it. Everybody stand up. Everybody stand up. 
I want you to put your hands out to the side. You might touch your friends. That's okay. All right? I want you to tilt your head back and just close your eyes and just wiggle those fingers and go, mmm, mmm, ah. Yeah, so it's getting weird. <laughs> you can open your eyes. That is just, you can have a seat now. That is just to illustrate the point that you must relax. I was having a conversation with Ridgely this morning. He chants every day, Buddhist chanting, about an hour a day, maybe more. In fact, he left breakfast to go do a chant. I said, that sounds really good. I'm actually into rituals. I have a book coming out about rituals, rituals that lead to success in your life, in all areas of your life, the areas that matter to you, right? Rituals are important. Chanting, relaxing, soaking into the moment. A friend of mine says, I like to become one with the mountain. Hug a tree, become one with the tree. I don't care, whatever it takes for you to not put in the perspiration to get the ideas you want. Does that make sense? Yes? Good. All right. And so creativity does come from knowledge. You guys are in the right place, as Tom said, at the right time right now to get knowledge that you need. This is a lifelong process, right? Learning. One of my bios, when they introduce me, I am a perpetual sponge for knowledge. I buy more info products, books, and stuff, stuff, right, than you can imagine because I'm a voracious consumer of information, knowledge, and working the journey for that to become wisdom. Does that make sense? How many of you are on this? Say I. I. We're all there. Good. All right. So with that, this is your 10 things you need to know about guerrilla creativity, and I want you to keep that handy. Refer back to it. So you must have inner amazement about your product or service. Many of us, and Rook talked about this yesterday, many of us find ourselves having created a business that we actually don't like. That's not good. We need to be innerly amazed about our product or service. And the more inner amazement we have about it, the more we can find fascinating to fascinate others. Make sense? Yes? Good. So a lot of us are going through the motions. It's like, I need to move widgets. I need more widgets. Sell more widgets. No. Become fascinating. People want your widgets. More widgets will move. Yes? Good. All right. So benefits and competitive advantages for your customers. People get this thing wrong all the time. They're talking features, 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 features. What do you get if you buy this? What do you get if this? What does it do for the person if they get it? What do those features actually lead to in terms of solving that person's largest pain, greatest need, most benefit? And it's funny. As marketers, what do we do? We buy into our own crap and think, well, we can write really good copy around all these features. In fact, I'm a partner with a billion-dollar copywriter, one of the few alive. He buys into his own crap and wants to promote features. And I'm like, you're too close to it. You can't see it. Can I take you on a walk? Mm -hmm. uh. And then what? He goes, ah, I didn't even see it. You can't. You're in the middle of it. You're working in it. You need to be looking upon it. People say work on the business. What does that mean? What does it mean? You need perspective. You need to step outside of the business and look back in and go, well, that is not fascinating. That is a feature. Yes? Make sense? Good. Be believable. Realize that people are skeptical. How many of you have heard of the BS detector? How many of you have seen it pegged for yourself? Bing, 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 bing. Too good to be true. I didn't create enough value, enough connection before I gave you a most irresistible mafia offer. How many of you have heard mafia offer in marketing circles? Just make it just an irresistible offer. Well, that's great as long as you've established the rapport and built up trust so that they believe. And then you can make them a great offer and it becomes not a sales job, it becomes a fulfillment job. And we all want fulfillment jobs because that's where the transaction occurs, right? That's where you transfer the value. Uh, interest in people. You have to have a genuine interest in people and tell prospects exactly what you want them to do. Today, there are people going to tell you exactly what they want you to do. They're doing that because they know if they don't tell you what to do, you won't do anything. You will sit there. You will be in inaction. 
A rock that moves gathers no moss. A rolling stone gathers no moss. The rock that sits there, covered in moss. Are you going to be all taken over by moss, or are you going to get to work? Yes? Help build the pyramids. You need to be clear when you're telling people what to do. And you need to measure your material against your strategy. We actually, in Gorilla, go through a whole thing where we actually help you create your marketing plan in seven sentences. In fact, we created a course and put it online in the Gorilla Institute that helps people create their marketing plan in seven sentences. Because how many of you know that true genius is displayed by concise brevity and clarity? Yes? People that don't know what they're doing, they talk a whole lot about nothing. If you can boil your plan down to seven sentences, it's super crystal clear. Here's how that helps. You're looking for a service provider. Here's your plan, does it fit? You hire somebody to do marketing. Here's your plan, does it fit? What are they working on? Here's your plan, does it fit? It's so clear, so concise, you cannot get off track. And that's where I see businesses fail all the time at all levels. From the startup inception idea all the way through the multi-billion dollar exits, where they go wrong is when they start getting overcomplicated on their plan. And complication leads to inaction, confusion, and execution of all the wrong things at all the wrong times. Or maybe all the wrong things at all the right times, right? So that is exactly what you need to do is have a very clear, concise plan. We're going to help you with that. So those are the seven steps to guerrilla creativity. Does that give you something to think about and get your brain warmed up this morning? Has this been good for you? Show of hands. Yes? Something good? Awesome.